This is TPC LEAP 2025 Algebra 1 Practice Test Section 2. So we're going to continue our uh, practice on this test using the Desmos graphing calculator to work some of the items. These are skills your kids can use when they take their actual LEAP Algebra 1 test. Or if you're in some other state besides Louisiana, these skills work on many, I, many practice tests in the United States anyway. So let's take a look at the website for the official Algebra 1 practice test. This is the login screen for the official LEAP practice test. All of them actually use the same login screen. I'm going to give you the username and the password uh, and the link to this site so that you can log in and do these problems with me. So the username is Algebra1, A-L-G-1, and the password is Teach2025. We're going to sign in. When you get to this screen, click Continue. Now we've already gone over Section 1B. I did skip Section 1A because uh, there was no calculator, so the whole point of this training is to get your kids familiar with your Desmos graphing calculator, so I'm skipping now to Section 2. This section is, um, I think, a little longer. Um, we're not going to look at all the items. Again, I'm specifically going to stick with items that require the use of the Desmos graphing calculator. So let's take a look at the system of equations. This is a typical system that they solve. So what we're going to do is up here at the top where the button has the graphing tool. We're going to type in these two equations. Now I do want to point out that not every state has the luxury of using equations like this. This is called an implicit equation where your x's and y's are on the same side of the equation. Uh, but fortunately for Louisiana, you can. So I'm going to go ahead and type both equations in. And then I'm going to look for the point of intersection. Now there is no need to adjust this graph because the point of intersection is visible in the graph already. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot uh, do this point. This point is 6.7. Now if for some reason your students don't know the difference between x and y, they can type x equals 6.7 in and it will intersect that point where the two lines cross. If they were to put the other one in, uh, the other point of intersection in, then it would not work. So let's say x is equal to 1.8. If they were to think that was the x, which shockingly I know. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm putting in the wrong blank. x equals 1.8 is way over here. So it's definitely the 6.7. So just a real quick pointer of something you could use with your students, particularly the ones that struggle. Use that vertical line to test your solution. Make sure it is the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we'll look at is question 16. It is the next uh, question in the set. Um, this question is not really that, I mean, I don't know that the calculator is going to help them too, too much. But it, if your kids have some general understanding of quadratics and how they work, they should be able to use the calculator to help themselves. So what I'm going to do is graph the parent function f of x equals x squared. You'll notice that this parabola that they're given is not the parent function. But ironically, if they were to use the parent function, they would still get the right quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and move this function to the left one and down one. And one way to do that is to put parentheses around this x. And then I'm going to move left one. So plus one will move it left one. 
and then out here minus 1 will move it down 1. So this is f of x. It's the one that's on the graph. Now I want to know where what quadrant the f of x plus 3 plus 2 is located. So we're going to put x plus 3. That's going to move the graph left 3 more. And then plus 2 will move it up 2. So like I said, even if they used the parent function, you'll notice the vertex of this graph is located in the second quadrant. So either way, they would have gotten second quadrant. If your students are not familiar with function notation in the calculator, I encourage you to use it. Like they can translate any function left, right, up, down, or they can, you know, multiply a function by a number and make it steeper or invert a function by putting a negative in front. So these are things hopefully your kids are already doing in class. So on this item, this would help for them to, if they know where the parent function is, they should be able to figure out quadrant two is the only one that makes sense. So let's move on to the next question. I have skipped quite a few questions. I'm all the way over to question number 21. Uh, the calculator basically can solve this equation if you just type it in. So the graph shows the solution is at negative 2 because that's the point of intersection. But let's say your kids don't know what it's even asking. Well, one way to solve an equation or find solutions to an equation or just to type it. So I'm going to type negative x cubed minus 4 equals 0 0.5 x squared plus x plus 4. And then the solution is the x-intercept of this graph, which is x equals 2. So I'm going to type, excuse me, not 2, negative 2. And so notice that's right on top of it. I may not be able to click on it, but I can certainly type the solution and it will go right over it. Then I can click on it. So x is equal to negative 2 is the solution, and they would type that in this box. The next item we're looking at is the next item, 22. And we're going to see which of the points that are listed here are solutions are actually on the graph of the equation. The equation is a linear equation with variables x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and type this into the calculator just as it appears. So click here and then type it in here. Once you've typed the equation in, you'll see this line in the graph. And so our goal is to find the points that lie on that line. And you need to be careful because some of these might be close to the line. Uh, and not lie on the line. This one is way far, so obviously negative 3, 6 is not going to work. So let's do negative 2, 0. And that's not going to work. And 0, negative 2. And that one works. That's right on the line. And 6, negative 3. We leave that one. I'll do a different one. 6, negative 3. Not on the line. And 8, 2. And that one works. So the only two actually that were close were those two answers, 0, negative 2, and 8, 2. Pretty straightforward. A real good use for your graphing calculator to check solutions. Next is item 23, and this is an average rate of change problem. We're given a function that is exponential, and we're looking for the average rate of change over the first five minutes of the experience. Of the experiment. So what we'll do is we'll start by typing in the function. It's a function of t. b of t equals 4 times 2 raised to the t power. Now I'm looking for the first five minutes, so I'm going to do b of 0 first, which is 4, and then I'm going to do b of 5, which is 128. The average rate of change is the slope of the line that connects those two points. The two points are 0, 4, and if you want to add that to the graph, you can. And uh, 5, 128. 
Now this is a kind of fill in the blank problem. I'm going to zoom way out here. Let's fix our window. Got to go to 128, so let's go to 150. And count by 50. All right, so let's go 0 to 10. Oops, just typoing up a storm. And then we'll do 0 to 150. Count by 50s. This looks better. All right, let me take a look at it. There it is. These are the two points we're talking about. So what I need is a line that connects the two points. You could do a regression equation, but you'll need a table for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it. If I go from 4 to 128, that means I went up 124. So my y value in my slope, my change in y value, should be 124. So the y's went up 124. The x values go from 0 to 5, so the x's went up 5. So the change in y divided by the change in x should be 24.8. So let's take a look at these answer choices. Yeah, there you go. 24.8. There it is. And the ratio, um, the rate is in bacteria per minute. Because it says average rate of change in number of bacteria for the first five minutes. So clearly bacteria per minute would be the ratio that we just found. Change in bacteria over the change in minutes. Uh, I do think this is extremely helpful. As long as your kids do know what average rate of change means, just find two points on the graph and the slope of the line that connects them, then the tool here really is quite helpful to evaluate the function and then they can do the math right there in the calculator. Let's go to the next question. The last question I'm doing is a another quadratic and this time I do think the graphing calculator will be quite helpful because what we can do is we could type in the original equation, our quadratic function, and then we can type in this, basically this equation, but instead of these two boxes, we're going to use sliders. So we'll say y is equal to negative 2 and then put x plus a, or they could put any letter really, I'm just going to use A and B for my two sliders. Shift 6 will give you the exponent 2, and then plus, don't use A again, use something else. So I'm going to use B, and if you'll click all, it'll keep them in order, A and then B. So my goal is to get this parabola, wait a minute. Let me put that minus sign back up here. All right, this is my original parabola, which was, and I left that negative off. That's why I was looking bad, but I've got that fixed. This parabola in red is the quadratic equation. And now I want to make this blue one match it because I'm rewriting that same equation, but just in a different form. So the goal is to move this around. And so see, if I move the A right here to 1, it, or negative 1, it's going to be right underneath that vertex. And if I move this up right there, it's going to fall on top of it. So now the blue is on top of the red. So the value negative 1 goes in this blank, and the value positive 7 needs to go in this blank. Now, if you want to make sure, you can just take out the A altogether and put negative 1 there and take out the B altogether and put 7 there, you'll get the same result. See, there's the blue one, the red one's right under it, so that is the correct answer. Therefore, the vertex of the graph, well, the vertex of either graph is the same. It's 1, 7. Of course, your kids have to know what that word means, but if they know, they can just click right on the graph to get it, and it is positive 1, 7. If you haven't had a chance to check out the LEAP 2025 practice test that I've created to basically mirror that the test I just showed you, I encourage you to check it out in my store, Secondary Math Assessment Resources. The link is in the show notes. I didn't make this a free test, but it is a pretty 
good price for what you get. This is an abbreviated version of the full test. You could give it in one class period if you have a block schedule, maybe. Uh, but probably you'll want to split this up into sections. There are three sections to the test, 1B, 2, and 3. There are 54 pages in this document. I am saying 90 minutes, but you'll probably need to um, kind of decide if that's going to work for you and your kids. When you do get this test, it's going to look something like this. It's just a PDF document with quite a bit in it. So if you'll scroll through the test, there's actually three sections of problems, some multiple choice, some free response, some short answer. It's pretty much every type of item that is going to appear on the test. There's an answer key at the very end. Let me scroll down. I want to show you this. I've given you the types of items, one, two, three, the points to be awarded per item. That's very helpful for the free response portion of the test. You'll want to look at that to basically figure out what points to put on your items. And then if you're going to give this pencil paper, I have given a blank answer document at the end that you can use. Uh, feel free to use that or not. If you have access to a w better way, which I, there are better ways, I do suggest giving this digitally. You may go to Formative or Edge Elastic, and I know there are other websites that will let you digitize a PDF and put your answer blanks in there, and they can work the test right there on the test, even with embedded calculators nowadays. So uh, that would be great. If you don't have the... the um, if you're not using the actual online practice test for your calculator, you can go to desmos.com. So let me show you how that works. And you will click on Math Tools and it, where it says Test Practice. Choose that. And at the top, don't choose down here. Choose Assessment. You're going to go to Louisiana, which is the LEAP test, LEAP 2025. That's the graphing calculator you'll want to use when giving this practice test or any other test, really, if you're in the state of Louisiana, so that your kids can get accustomed to the Desmos graphing calculator. Hopefully, these problems have been helpful to you. You've got some strategies in mind to teach your, to your students. If you have any questions or suggestions about items you would like to see worked with Desmos, and please leave me a comment. Y'all have a great day.